Hello, my name is Larry, and welcome to my new channel. Uh, this is the first video uh, in the channel, which is designed to give uh, advice, practical recommendations, suggestions, uh, those kinds of things to those who are beginning amateur astronomers. So if you're just beginning this greatest of all hobbies, if you're just getting into it, or perhaps you're considering getting into it, hopefully you'll find some information of value in these videos that will help you along the way. Uh, my intent in these videos is just to share some things with you that I wish someone had shared with me along the way that might have uh, helped me uh, move forward through the hobby. Now, why am I uh, qualified to give this kind of advice, uh, to share this information? Well, I'm not the most knowledgeable of amateur astronomers, and I'm certainly not the most intelligent of amateur astronomers. Uh, I'm not the most technologically savvy of amateur astronomers. Uh, I'm not a young guy, you know, Captain Obvious. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, I'm not going to be very glib, not going to be very funny, perhaps not as energetic as I would like to be. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm an old school guy, I'm a boomer, and so a lot of the content of these videos is probably going to be from an old school perspective, which I hope you will forgive and look past uh, as you try to, to find some information that might help you move into and through this wonderful hobby. Uh, so what qualifies me then to, to give this kind of advice? Well, two things, I think. First of all, I have a lot of experience. And secondly, I have a lot of passion for this hobby. I really believe this is the greatest of all hobbies. Uh, you know, it has the capacity to excite you. It has a capacity to inspire. And, and it has an endless capacity to educate us <clears throat> about this great universe in which we live. So uh, I have a great passion for it. I have a lot of experience. <clears throat> Pardon me. I got my first telescope when I was 12 years old. And that happened to come at a time when uh, uh, ex space exploration was sort of in its infancy. I had the great privilege to spend my childhood uh, during the time of the first uh, launch of artificial satellites, the first manned space flights. I was still a teenager at the time of the first uh, landing on the moon. Uh, I had writ or read a lot of science fiction novels from my school libraries by you know, uh, uh, people like uh, Robert Heinlein and Lester Del Rey and Isaac Asimov. So I had a love for science, a love for astronomy, a love for exploration within me at a very early age. And that's a passion that's really continued unabated right up to the present time. I'll never forget my first view through that uh, small refracting telescope when I was 12. I was hooked immediately, stayed with the hobby. Uh, I studied engineering in college but found the opportunity to take some elective courses in space flight and orbital mechanics and an overview of astronomy and uh, you know, a course in astrophotography. Uh, I even had the, the opportunity at one point during my undergraduate career to play a very small part in helping uh, the chairman of my department who had a grant to do some research for NASA. So uh, after college, I, I stayed uh, passionate about the hobby now. I will say that I have not always been intensely involved in pursuing amateur astronomy. When you've lived as long as I have, uh, you will have times in your life when you won't be able to do exactly what you might like to do. You know, the pressures of job and family and just the pressures of life in general sometimes uh, have to take priority. And so I haven't been as closely involved with a hobby over all these years as I might uh, like to have been but I've always remained passionate about it. And here, six decades, yeah, I said it, six decades after that first look through my first small telescope, I am probably more passionate about the hobby than I've ever been before. So that's where I'm coming from. Uh, not trying to pat myself on the back or toot my own horn. I just want to give you a sense of why I think I'm probably qualified to, to give some advice and uh, you know, make some suggestions as to how to proceed for those of you who are just getting into what can be a little bit of a confusing or even intimidating hobby. So I hope you'll take that for what it is. Uh, I don't want to come across as, a, as an arrogant know-it-all, you know, an old guy who's going to tell you what to do and how to do it. 
Uh, that's not my intent. That's not what I am. That's not what I'm all about. These are just practical suggestions or bits of advice that you can take or leave. But again, these are things that I just kind of wish someone had told me as I was moving into and then through the hobby. So that's what it's all about. And, uh, and just wanted to give you that kind of background. Uh, let me give you a, a general flavor for what you can expect in the videos that are to come. My intent is to be very relaxed. Uh, I want to be as non-technical as possible. Although when you're talking about something like astronomy, sometimes you have to get a bit technical. But I want to keep the, it as non-technical as possible. Uh, uh, just practical things, things that you probably may not have considered or that I think, in my opinion, that you need to consider thinking through and considering as you move forward uh, into this hobby. So that's going to be the general nature of them. Now, I am primarily a visual astronomer. You know, there's as you get into the hobby, you will probably find yourself gravitating in one or of several different directions. Uh, there are visual astronomers, and those are the type who are just passionate about looking through the eyepiece of a telescope at all these great wonders in the sky. You know, looking at them, marveling at them, learning about them, just being, uh, you know, inspired by them. That's the thing that motivates me most. That's the thing that I've been most passionate about, just a visual astronomer. But I'm also an engineer, so you know there, I'm, I'm a little bit of a gadget person, so I like telescopes, and I'm very interested in all the, the marvelous accessories these days that are available to go along with telescopes. And so there will be some, some uh, aspect of these videos that will uh, you know, be geared towards telescopes and equipment. I might do some low-level reviews from time to time of various telescopes and various pieces of equipment, but uh, so I'm a little bit of a gadget guy, but uh, much more so a visual astronomer. Uh, I am what I like to call a, uh, a poor man's astrophotographer. You know, a lot of people get into astronomy and they, they move into astrophotography, taking pictures of the night sky, and that becomes their driving passion. Uh, now, in order to do that, and to do that well, and to become a serious astrophotography, requires a tremendous investment in time and also a very considerable investment in money. This is probably the most expensive aspect of amateur astronomy. You can drop several thousands of dollars and then some to get all the equipment that you need to take really good photographs of objects in the night sky. Uh, I haven't gone that route. Uh, I do like to take uh, pictures of the objects that I'm looking at in the night sky. But, you know, I, 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 I don't spend a lot of time in pre- and post-processing. I have not been willing to spend the money uh, and to invest all the time required to get really serious about astrophotography. So I just take some simpler kinds of uh, pictures of the night sky in hopes that they will turn out to be reasonably representative representations of all these wonderful things that I've viewed through my telescope. So that's, that's where I stand with respect to astrophotography. So you won't see anything in these videos about, you know, uh, uh, the best equipment to buy uh, to do serious astrophotography, you know, guide scopes, uh, sophisticated mounts, uh, those kinds of things, uh, uh, cameras that are specifically designated for use by astronomers. I don't have any of those things. I don't have much experience with those kinds of things. So therefore, logically, I won't be talking about uh, too many of those things. So that's kind of what you can expect. You'll see a, a, a slant towards just simple visual astronomy with a little bit of discussion along the way about telescopes and equipment and about, you know, relatively unsophisticated methods of astrophotography. Now, the name of my channel, as you've probably seen already, is Old Gazer. Now, I've been very clever in coming up with that. I'm sure you'll agree because I'm old. You know, I'm an old geezer, uh, but I'm also an old stargazer, you know, an old gazer. So there you have it. Old geezer, old gazer, you know, kind of a play on words. Now, wait a minute. You know, now that I think about that and now that I've heard myself talking about it in that way, perhaps I'm not as clever as I thought I was. <laughs>
But anyway, Old Gazer it is. The channel is called Old Gazer. And once again, not to belabor the point, but the intent of this channel is to provide you with some practical advice, some practical suggestions, some practical information that hopefully will be of at least some help to you as you move into and through this most marvelous of all hobbies, okay? Uh, well, that's enough introductory stuff. In fact, I probably overdid that, uh, but uh, let's move on and get into it, shall we? In this first video, uh, I would like to pose a question. And the question is this, is amateur astronomy for you? Uh, now, uh, I'm not gonna try to drive anybody away from the hobby or discourage anybody from getting involved in the hobby, but the implication of a question like that, is amateur astronomy for you, is of course that amateur astronomy is probably not for everybody, and indeed it isn't. And so what I wanna do here is to sort of develop my own personal view of, of a profile of a person who will probably enjoy amateur astronomy and be successful at it. And hopefully as we go through this, you will either recognize yourself in this profile or you may come to realize that maybe this is something that just might not be for you. So uh, again, my own opinions, my own views, based on almost 60 years of being involved in the hobby, let me share with you the characteristics of a person that I think will enjoy this hobby and be successful at it, okay? First of all, uh, you cannot approach this hobby with unrealistic expectations. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, it's very simple, really. Uh, you're gonna be an amateur. You're gonna be using amateur equipment, basically a backyard telescope, and therefore you should not expect to see what the Hubble telescope sees. Uh, uh, you know, we're all accustomed to seeing those breathtaking images uh, from Hubble and from all of the probes that have now been sent to the far reaches of the solar system and have sent back these fantastic images. Uh, uh, that's what we're accustomed to seeing. But if that's what you're expecting to see uh, through the eyepiece of your amateur telescope, you're bound to be a little disappointed and your expectations are probably a little too high. Now, let me hasten to add that you will see some very wonderful things, some stunning images, even through small amateur telescopes. And there's nothing, for me at least, quite like the feeling of being out there in the night air, uh, looking with your own eyes through your own telescope at these marvelous objects there in the night sky. Uh, you know, there's gonna be plenty of excitement, plenty of breathtaking imagery to see there, but not to belabor the point again, but you just should not expect to see what the Hubble telescope sees. The second thing I would suggest to you is that uh, amateur astronomy is going to change your lifestyle. If you get involved in uh, amateur astronomy to any serious degree, uh, it's going to change your routine of life, it's going to change your habits, it's going to change your lifestyle. Now, it's not too difficult to understand why that's so. Uh, if you get into amateur astronomy, you're going to be spending a lot of time outside at night. A lot of time, because that's where amateur astronomers do their thing, and that's when they do it, outside at night. Now, if you haven't been involved in astronomy before or know very little about it, if you haven't spent much time looking through a telescope, if you haven't taken any real serious looks at the night sky, then being outside at night pursuing this hobby is going to be a new thing for you. You probably are not used to spending uh, much time outside at night, and therefore it's going to be a pretty significant change in your routine of life. And you need to understand that going in, and if there's some reason why you can't do that or don't want to do that, then amateur astronomy is likely not for you. Now, also uh, along those lines, uh, be sensitive to the fact that when your lifestyle changes by your involvement in this hobby, it's also gonna have an impact uh, upon those who you share your life with. You know, your spouse, your significant other, your family, your friends, whoever it is. When your lifestyle, when your habits, when your routines change, it's gonna have an impact on them too. And so you need to be sensitive to that and everybody involved just needs to understand that going in. Uh, Right on the heels of that, let me say that amateur astronomy, if you get into it to any serious degree, is going to require a very substantial investment of time. It's just that kind of thing. Uh, you're going to be spending a lot of time uh, viewing objects. You're going to be spending a lot of time uh, doing various things that will help you move forward through the hobby. It's just a time-consuming hobby. 
So if you don't have the time to give it, then you need to, to consider your approach to it and really think through whether or not this is something you wanna get involved with. It also will require an investment of money. Now, I know you probably may not wanna hear about that, but uh, amateur astronomy does require uh, an investment of money. Well, how much money will you have to invest? You can spend anywhere from a few hundred dollars all the way up to well the sky is the limit. You can easily spend many thousands of dollars on this hobby if you wanna chase bigger and bigger and bigger telescopes and if you wanna get seriously involved in astrophotography and those kinds of things, you can spend a great deal of money. This can be a frightfully expensive hobby. It need not be, but it can be. <clears throat> but you will need to invest, in my view, at least several hundred dollars to really uh, uh, be able to appreciate and enjoy this hobby. So there's that. A big investment in time and a significant investment of money will be required. Uh, amateur astronomy is all about patience. Uh, if you're not a patient person, if you don't, if you're not able to easily deal with frustrations, many of which over you have, which you have no control over, uh, if you're not a person who likes to do things in a precise and accurate manner, uh, if you're not a person who wants to take the time, who's, who's, who's not willing and able to do the right things the right way, then amateur astronomy is definitely not for you. I'll just tell you that right up front. Uh, it requires a tremendous amount of patience. Uh, it, it requires the ability to be able to deal with frustrations without going off the deep end and being continually disappointed or discouraged. Uh, it takes somebody who's willing to take the time to do the right things the right way. If you can't do those things, if you're not that kind of person, you won't enjoy the hobby and you won't be successful at it. If you are that kind of person, then you're on the right track. This just might be for you, okay? Uh, you need to be aware and understand that there's, if you're just, if you're new to this, if you don't know much about astronomy or telescopes or the night sky, there's going to be a pretty big learning curve here. And so you've got to be willing to, to, uh, to push through that learning curve. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can't just embrace everything associated with the, the hobby all at one time. And, and try to do everything all at once. You can't try to do too much too soon. You know, let me put some cliches in here. Uh, don't jump into the deep end before you know how to swim. Don't try to walk before you can crawl. Don't try to run before you can walk. Uh, you know, put any cliche you would like in there that they would be applicable there. That's the way amateur astronomy is. Uh, you know, you've got to start by learning the fundamentals. You, you know, you learn the night sky. You learn how to find objects in the night sky. You learn how to get them within the field of view of your telescope. You learn how to keep them in the field of view of your telescope. Uh, you got to learn about telescopes. Uh, you know, what the parts of a telescope are, what their functions are, which parts of a telescope are perhaps more important than others. Uh, how to find objects in that telescope and keep them in your field of view. How to view objects through an eyepiece. You know, that's it's a very, uh, uh, very much an art as well as a skill and something that can only be uh, perfected through a lot of practice, a lot of use. It takes time to become a good viewer. All of those things. There's a lot of things associated with learning the hobby. There's a big learning curve if you're just a beginner and you have to accept that and be willing to pass through that learning curve and do the fundamental things first and then use those things as a springboard to move into whatever other more complicated aspects of the hobby you might choose to pursue. So you have to be willing to go through that learning curve. So let me just briefly review all of this for you. Now, there are other things that we th could talk about, but these are, are some of the major ones, I think, that need to be considered and thought through before you make that decision to plunge into this hobby. So once again, just by way of summary, uh, you're going to need to, to enter the hobby with uh, reasonable expectations rather than unreasonable ones. Don't expect to see what the Hubble telescope sees. Uh, you're going to have to realize that this and, and be willing to accept the fact that this hobby is going to change your lifestyle. Uh, you're going to have to have a lot of time to invest in the hobby and you're going to be, have to be willing and able to spend at least a few hundred dollars, if not much more, in the hobby. Uh, you're going to have to be patient, very patient. You're going to have to, to deal with a lot of frustrations, again, many of which over which you have no control. 
Uh, you're going to have to to be willing to be precise and accurate, and you're going to have to have a a uh, the ability and the capacity and even the eagerness, I would say, to do the right things the right way. And you're going to have to realize there's going to be a, a big learning curve, and you're going to have to be to pass through that in a way so that you learn the fundamentals first and then you move on into other things and you don't try to grab a hold of everything and do everything all at once. That will be overwhelming and frustrating and probably will drive you away from the hobby. So that's sort of a profile of the person that I think uh, is a good candidate for enjoying the hobby and being successful at it. If you satisfy uh, that profile or if you check off most of those points, then I think probably this will be for you and you will enjoy it and you'll be very good at it. Uh, uh, if you're not that kind of person, if you don't exhibit the characteristics that we've been talking about here, then honestly, folks, amateur astronomy is probably not for you. You're probably not going to enjoy it. You're probably not going to be successful at it. Again, not trying to drive anybody away, not trying to be negative or discouraging or anything like that, but, you know, uh, you just need to know what you're up against. If you haven't really thought through what's going to be involved in getting involved in the hobby, that's something that you need to consider and think through and you know, decide from that what your approach to the hobby is going to be uh, or if you want to get involved uh, at all. Uh, now, if you're that kind of person uh, who you know, fits that profile, if you're, one thing that I should have mentioned at the very beginning, let me just add on here, just by way of completeness here, you've got to be a person who enjoys science and who is especially attracted to astronomy and space exploration. If you don't have an abiding interest in those kinds of things, then you probably won't enjoy the hobby either. So, you know, that's a given right up front. I should have mentioned it, but I didn't. I guess I kind of considered that to be too obvious to mention, but you've got to be that too. If you're that kind of person, if you're interested in science, astronomy, space exploration, and if you have many of the characteristics that we've been discussing here, then uh, this is going to be great for you, and, and you're going to enjoy it and have a lot of fun doing it. Uh, it's literally going to open up a whole new universe for you, and it's going to be quite a spectacular journey. It's going to excite you. It's going to inspire you. It's going to give you opportunities to be constantly educated more and more and more about the grandeur and the greatness and the splendor of, of this universe in which we live. And it's going to go a long ways to, to helping you discover your place within that universe and comes to terms with that, which is really what amateur astronomy is all about to begin with. So there you have it. Uh, uh, that's who I am. That's what these, uh, this channel is all about. That's what the nature of the videos is going to be. And hopefully I've given you enough information to decide whether or not uh, you're really suited for this hobby. And, uh, and, uh, and, and hopefully you are and you're ready and willing and, and just eager and chomping at the bit to move forward and get started. So I hope there was something of value in here uh, uh, that can be of some practical benefit to you. Uh, next time we're going to, uh, uh, I think, talk about some of the major frustrations uh, that face uh, amateur astronomers and what, if anything, can be done to mitigate those frustrations. So that's for next time. Uh, for now, let's call it quits for there. Let me just end by uh, thanking you very much for watching this first video. And uh, as always, I will wish you clear skies and good viewing.